able to chase quarterbacks. Love that. Bennett mentioning each and every one of those quarterbacks in the division. And here we have a Twitter back and forth between Rap Sheet and Mike Garofolo. Did I see that correctly? Either way, Bennett also mentioning the fact that the depth that the Eagles have on the D line is actually comparable to that of what the Golden State Warriors have. A lot of depth, Ooh. a lot of stars on Ooh. that team. So... Oh, Michael Bennett uh, stirring it up there a little bit there in his introductory press conference. As he well should. I love that that community, that culture in Philadelphia is perfectly suited for Michael Bennett. Now, I'm glad you oh, yeah. teased that little Twitter, not battle that we saw, but just the timeline, if you will. Let's pull that bad boy up. Ian and Mike both breaking mm. the Orlando Scandrick news. Yeah. You let him get you by, what is that? No. I'm not good at math. No, I got it's him. 16, 37 26 seconds? seconds? By 26 seconds. Oh, you seconds. were first. I Winner, I got him, and that's the difference between Will Selva. <laughs> that's why I had insufficient funds. Yeah, that's the difference between Will Selva citing me instead of Ian Rappaport in his report. 26 seconds, that is my life right there. Now, mind you, I'll add the, de the, de the so degree. you beat him, I'm proud of you. I did, thank you. I, the degree of difficulty, I was doing a sh uh, call with our show producer, Logan Swain, at the time, so I told him, hold on, I have to beat Ian on this, and rushed to the computer and banged it out. Scoreboard. Ian, Ian came up with some kind of excuse or something, but you're right, scoreboard. Look up at it. Sorry. Good job, Mike. Thank you. Cheers. That's all about in that industry, okay? 26 hold it, hold seconds. Hold it it's an eternity. <laughs> Goose snack. Nate thinks it's so funny how bad at math I am. Like, see, there's nothing that Nate thinks is more hilarious than how no. terrible at math I am. The only reason it's so funny because I'm equally as bad as math. Oh, is that so right? When uh, you were looking at the seconds, like, I was like, I'm not even going to attempt it. I'm like, where's my TI-89? Click carry the okay, one. He's like, uh, 17. Like, uh, you beat him by 16. I have no the idea. Also, 37 is, is a bigger number than 11 before we even figure out the distance. But then I wasn't thinking about like, the time. Yeah, it's okay. tricky. Woo, shut up! Some of the top execs in the NFL descended upon NC State yesterday in anticipation of one of the top defensive prospects in next month's draft. It's defensive end Bradley Chubb. We're hearing a lot about him, and he drew the attention of the likes of Bill Belichick and our very own Mike Mayock, who brings us more on everything that you need to know after what went down in rally. Well, the last time four defensive linemen from the same college went in the draft was 2013. The answer is LSU. But I think this year, North Carolina State has a chance to get four defensive linemen drafted. Of course, Bradley Chubb, the headliner. From my perspective, I think he's one of the top three players in the draft. And I don't think anything he did today will dissuade any team from drafting him. B.J. Hill from my perspective, reminds me of Linval Joseph. I think he'll go in the second round, and I think he'll play 10 years at a high level in this league. Now, Kentavia Street is really interesting. People are all over the board with opinions on him. I think he's going to go on the third day, and I see him as a sub-package interior rusher, and that leaves Justin Jones, powerful interior presence, and I think he'll go on the third day also. Offensively, running back Naheem Hines, wow. 4-3-8 at the Combine, was a former wide receiver, catches the ball, return specialist, and a gunner. I think he's a third or fourth round pick. And then Jalen Samuels, they call him a tight end H-back. I'm not sure what you call him, but he ran 4-5-4, and he's going to be a weapon at the next level. Great stuff from Mike Mayock there. More on Chubb later in the show with Bill Belichick. But six of our seven NFL.com mock draft experts, including Peter, have Bradley Chubb going in the top four uh, so good morning, Peter and Peter Schrager out there watching. We love you. We love Mel. And uh, they also have him becoming the first defensive player overall, guys, off the board. So is Chubb the best defensive prospect in this year's draft? I think yes, definitively. And I got a, I got a vision for this guy, a vision of where he could go. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to point out right here. He is right here. Okay. All right. See if you can see this vision. These pants are navy blue, a little orange trim on him, and all the way up in the helmet, he's got a little horse on it, and he plays opposite Von Miller in Denver, Ooh. and we go Chubb and Von Miller, and we meet in the middle. Look at the Mario Williams patch, number one overall pick in the draft. I want him in yeah. Denver. I think they ride Case Keenum. John always, that, that, when, they, when they sign Case, he's holding up the jersey. Elway is saying definitively, we got our guy. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you come out and say that and then go draft a quarterback at number five. Right. I think you ride Case Keenum for at least a year, you get the best defensive player in the draft and have the best pass rush in the entire NFL. Chubb and Miller, I'm here for it. I gotta ask you, Quentin yeah. Nelson's on the board, and we're talking defense here. Quentin Nelson's on the board at five in the Broncos yeah. pick. That is your guy. You love, I love him. Love Quentin Nelson. If he's there, 
and it's Chubb, who should the Broncos take? You can't go wrong with Quentin Nelson because he's going to immediately make your team better and there's zero bust potential from everything you read. I've just talked myself into the romantic version of this mm -hmm. pass rush and everybody wants a passer. Let's not undersell and undersell pass rushers. Second most important position, I like this guy in Denver. I dig. And when you think recent Broncos defense, you have to go back to that vision of them getting after Cam Newton. That's it. it, it, it was Super Bowl a, champs. It, it's something you can never forget. You can race out of your mind. Ever. They made Cam Newton look as if there was kryptonite on the field for the first time in his career and we want that defense to come back. So regardless of what they have on the offside of the ball and getting Case Keenum and now building pieces around him, you get a guy like this, you're automatically getting yourself back to that promise. What I love was Bill Belichick telling him yesterday, we got the 31st pick, there's no shot that we're going to see you, you're not going to be anywhere near it. <laughs> and you saw the admiration in his eyes when he watched that work out there, had him working with his hands a little bit and doing a bunch of... The, the guy's got all the tools, he really could be a difference maker. I, I find it interesting, you, you set up that scenario at five. Goodbye, earpiece. I set up that... I, I can't take it anymore. The, the, uh, the, the scenario at five yeah. with Nelson and Chubb on the board, and then you've got the Colts. If they don't trade out at six, right. being able to to get either guy, he would look really good in a Colts yeah, uniform as well. No yeah, doubt. About that. When the Colts were the Colts, it wasn't because of Peyton and Reggie, it's because of Bob Sanders and Dwight Freeney. That's, the move. That's the guy. That's the benefit of those quarterbacks going so early. Maybe we see four quarterbacks go off the board at one through four, say the Browns trade out, and then you have all those great other position players like the Quentin Nelsons yeah. Yeah. and the Chubbs, and then the Fitzpatricks will fall way down. All right, uh, we will be back after this. By the way, we will show you that Bill Belichick and Mr. Chubb.